Hello friends! I am so thankful that we can take a few moments today to sit down and enjoy our annual Belfry Elementary Family Literacy Night together. Now, it looks a little different this year because we can't be together in person, but I think you're going to find tonight's event is extra special and full of the love of reading that we always get to share together. So, I invite you to snuggle in right now, get ready to listen to a great book, and join me back here in just a few minutes. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Moore and I am a sixth grade teacher at Belpre Elementary. Today I am going to read a book called The Butter Battle Book and it's by Dr. Seuss. The reason that I really like this book is because it's a typical fun Dr. Seuss rhyming book, but it's also a book that makes me think. The main characters of this book don't like each other very much and it's for a very silly reason. Um, and they let that hate grow into violence. And I think that reading this book provides a good opportunity for us to stop and think about how getting along with people that we disagree with is an important thing to practice and it's an important skill to have um, because we all have so much more in common than how we differ. And so um, I really like this book for that reason. Um, so here it is, The Butter Battle Book. On the last day of summer, 10 hours before fall, my grandfather took me out to the wall. For a while, he stood silent. Then finally, he said, with a very sad shake of his very old head, as you know, on this side of the wall, we are yooks. On the far other side of this wall live the Zooks. Then my grandfather said, it's high time that you knew of the terribly horrible thing that Zooks do. In every Zook house and in every Zook town, every Zook eats his bread with the butter side down. But we Yooks, as you know, when we breakfast or sup, spread our bread, Grandpa said, with the butter side up. That's the right honest way, Grandpa gritted his teeth. So you can't trust a zook who spreads his bread underneath. Every zook must be watched. He has kinks in his soul. That's why, as a youth, I made watching my goal, watching zooks for the zook watching border patrol. In those days, of course, the wall wasn't so high, and I could look any zook square in the eye. If he dared to come close, I could give him a twitch with my tough-tufted prickly snickberry switch. For a while, that worked fine. All the zooks stayed away, and our country was safe. Then one terrible day, a very rude zook by the name of Van Itch snuck up and slingshotted my snickberry switch. With my broken off switch, with my head hung in shame, to the chief zookaroo in great sorrow I came. But our leader just smiled. He said, you're not to blame, and those zooks will be sorry they started this game. We'll dress you right up in a fancier suit. We'll give you a fancier slingshot to shoot. And he ordered the boys in the back room to figure how to build me some sort of a triple sling jigger. With my triple sling jigger, I sure felt much bigger. I marched to the wall with great vim and great vigor, right up to Van Itch with my hand on the trigger. I'll have no more nonsense, I said with a frown, from zooks who eat bread with the butter side down. Van Itch looked quite sickly. He ran off quite quickly. I'm unhappy to say he came back the next day in a spiffy new suit with a big new machine 
and he snarled as he said, looking frightfully mean. You may fling those hard rocks with your triple sling jigger, but I also now have my hand on the trigger. My wonderful weapon, the jigger rock snatch em, will fling em right back just as quick as we catch em. We'll have no more nonsense. We'll take no more yuck gup from you yooks who eat bread with the butter side up. I have failed, sir, I sobbed as I made my report to the chief yookaroo in the headquarters fort. He just laughed. You've done nothing at all of the sort. Our slingshots have failed. That was old fashioned stuff. Slingshots, dear boy, are not modern enough. All we need is some newfangled kind of a gun. My boys in the back room have already begun to think up a walloping whizzinger one. My bright boys are thinking they're on the right track. They'll think one up quick and we'll send you right back. They thought up a great one. They certainly did. They thought up a gun called the Kickapoo Kid, which they loaded with powerful Puadu powder and ants eggs and bees legs and dried fried clam chowder. And they carefully trained a real smart dog named Daniel to serve as our country's first gun-toting spaniel. Then Daniel, the Kickapoo Spaniel, and I marched back toward the wall with our heads held up high while everyone cheered and their cheers filled the sky. Fight! Fight for the butter side up! Do or die! Well, we didn't do, and we didn't quite die, but we sure did get worsted, poor Daniel and I. Van Itch was there too, and he said, the old pig, the boys in my back room invented this rig called the eight-nozzled elephant-toted boom blitz. It shoots high-explosive sour cherry stone pits and will put your dumb kickapoo kid on the fritz. Poor Daniel and I were scared out of our wits. Once more, by Van Itch, I was bested and beat. Once again, I limped home from the wall in defeat. I dragged and I sagged and my spirits were low, as low as I thought that they ever could go. When I heard a boom ba and a diddle dee dill and our butter up band marched up over the hill. The chief Yokaru had sent them to meet me along with the right side up song girls to greet me. They sang, oh be faithful, believe in thy butter and they lifted my spirits right out of the gutter. My boy, smiled the chief Yokaru, we've just voted and made you a general. You've been promoted. Your pretty new uniform's ready, get in it. The big war is coming, you're going to begin it. And what's more, this time you are certain to win it. My boys in the back room have finally found just wait till you see what they've puttered up now. In their great new machine, you'll fly over that wall and clobber those buttered down zooks one and all. Those boys in the back room sure knew how to putter. They made me a thing called the utterly sputter. And I jumped aboard with my heart all aflutter and steered toward the land of the upside down butter. This machine was so modern, so frightfully new, no one knew quite exactly just what it would do. But it had several faucets that sprinkled blue goo, which somehow would sprinkle the zooks as I flew and gum up that upside down butter they chew. I was racing pell-mell when I heard a voice yell, if you sprinkle us zooks, You'll get sprinkled as well. Van Itch had a sputter exactly like mine, and he yelled, My blue gooer is working just fine, and I'm here to say that if yooks can goo zooks, you'd better forget it, cause zooks can goo yooks. I flew right back home, and as you may have guessed, I was downright despondent, disturbed, and depressed. And I saw, just as soon as I stepped back on land, so were all of the girls of the Butter Up Band. The chief drum majorette, Miss Yuki Ann Sue, said, 
That was a pretty sour flight that you flew, and the chief Yukaru has been looking for you. I raced to his office. The place was a sight. Have no fear, said the chief. Everything is all right. My bright back room boys have been brighter than bright. They've thought up a gadget that's newer than new. It is filled with mysterious mulakamu and can blow all those zooks clear to Salamagoo. They've invented the bitsy big boy boomeroo. You just run to the wall like a nice little man. Drop this bomb on the zooks just as fast as you can. I have ordered all yooks to stay safe underground while the bitsy big boy boomeroo is around. As I raced for that wall with the bomb in my hand, I noticed that every last yook in our land was obeying our chief yookaroo's grim command. They were all bravely marching with banners a flutter down a hole for their country and right side up butter. That's when grandfather found me. He grabbed me. He said, you should be down that hole. You're up here instead. But perhaps this is all for the better somehow. You will see me make history right here and right now. Grandpa leapt up that wall with a lopulous leap and he cleared his horse throat with a bopulous beep. He screamed, here's the end of that terrible town full of zooks who eat bread with the butter side down. And at that very instant, we heard a clup clup of feet on the wall and old Van Itch clopped up. The boys in his back room had made him one too. In his fist was another big boy, Boomeroo. I'll blow you, he yelled, into pork and wee beans. I'll butter side up you to small smithereens. Grandpa, I shouted, be careful. Oh, gee, who's going to drop it? Will you or will he? Be patient, said Grandpa. We'll see. We will see. So what do you think happened? That's the end of the book. Have a discussion with someone around you about what you think might be the next thing that happened. Good afternoon. I'm Mrs. Miller and I teach third grade. And one of the things I love to do more than anything is read myself, but I also love to read to my children. So today I'm gonna to share with you one of my favorite books and one of the favorite books of the students in my classes. This is Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner Wallendiner Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. So. I'm going to share it with you. I hope you can see the lovely picture on the front. She's very agile. All right. And on the inside, we have lovely family photos. And we have to note that she's just being born and this is her father. So we look for her and him, excuse me, in every page. She had a funny name, but she wasn't much to blame. Her mother gave it to her just the same, same, same. Oh, Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner, Wallendiner, Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. Well, she had two peculiar hairs on her head. One was black and one was red. Oh, Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner, Wallendiner, Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. If you want to clap with me at the end, that would be great. She had two eyes that were quite a sight. One looked left and the other looked right. Oh, Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner, Wallendiner, Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. She had two holes in the bottom of her nose, one for her fingers and one for her toes. Oh, Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner, Wallendiner, Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. See, my book is loved. It's starting to fall apart. She had two teeth inside of her mouth, one went north and the other went south. Oh, Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner, Wallendiner, Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. She had two arms that flopped all around. When she walked, they would drag on the ground. Oh, Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner, Wallendiner, Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. I asked the girls if they could do this. Wowie kazowie, if they could. She had two feet that were wide and flat, each one bigger than a bathroom mat. Oh, Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner, Wallendiner, Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. She had one brain inside of her head. What it thought is what she said. 
Catalina Magdalena Hoofenstein or Wallendine or Hogan Logan Bogan. What's her name? Some folks say her breath smells sweet, but me, I'd rather smell her feet. Oh, Catalina Magdalena Hoopenstein or Wallendine or Hogan Logan Bogan. What's her name? Ooh, look here. If rain makes flowers sweet and clean, there ought to be a downpour on Magdalene. Oh, Catalina Magdalena Hoopenstein, I'm Wallendiner, Hogan Logan Bogan, Smith was her name. The end. Hope you liked it. Baby Grayson. Welcome to our virtual literacy night. So this evening we're going to be reading one of our very favorite stories to you. It's Three Hens and a Peacock. Now, Baby Grayson doesn't know how to read yet, but in our house this is how we like to promote literacy. We read a bedtime story almost every night and it's a really easy way. So are you ready? Are you ready to read? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Three Hens and a Peacock, written by Lester L. Lamanac and illustrated by Henry Cole. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. Once in a while, someone would stop to buy tomatoes or corn, perhaps a quart of milk. Nothing unusual happened here, until that peacock showed up. And the old hound kept right on doing what they'd always done. But that peacock had never lived on a farm. He had no idea what to do. So he spread his fancy feathers and set to shrieking. Eventually, the peacock wandered down to the road. When cars whizzed by, he shook his feathers and cried out in his loudest voice. Of course, folks stopped for a closer look. Day after day, more folks stopped to admire the peacock, and they all bought tomatoes and corn, eggs and milk. Business on the Tucker's farm was booming. Everyone seemed happy to have visitors stopping by. But trouble was brewing in the hen house. The hens were squawking and clucking and flapping their wings. We do all the work around here, and I'd like to see that peacock lay one single egg. Exactly. He just struts around screaming. I suppose fancy feathers are more important than laying eggs. That lazy peacock gets all the attention. All we do is all the work. The peacock had heard every word. For days he looked about it, groaning and moaning. I wish I could be more useful around here. Humph, clucked one hen. The others ruffled their feathers. The old hound stretched and slowly raised his head. Why not let the peacock stay here and be useful while you hens take the glamorous job down by the road? The three hens began clucking to one another. What a wonderful plan. Yes, it's a fabulous idea, old ladies. We simply must fancy up our feathers tonight and nothing but our brightest beads, bangles, and bows. We'll stop traffic for sure. Why, you girls know I can strut with the best of them. The peacock perked up. Let's do it, he declared. Tomorrow, I'll stay here, sit on a nest, and cluck. And we'll get all gussied up, said the hens. We'll be so glamorous. At sunrise the next morning, the hens strutted down to the road. The peacock marched right to the hen house and poked his head inside. The hens flocked by the road, waiting for a car. When they saw one approaching, they clucked and squawked and flapped their wings in a flurry of feathers, but every car whizzed right on by. The peacock sucked his tummy in and wiggled from left to right, trying to squeeze through the tiny hen house door. His front half was in, his back half was out. Down by the road, those hens tried every chicken trick they knew. Still, no car stopped. Finally, the peacock made it into the hen house. He held his breath and pushed with all his might, but no matter how hard he tried, 
he could not lay a single egg, not one. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. What's the peacock doing in the hen house? asked Farmer Tucker. Who knows, said Mrs. Tucker. And what are those hens doing down by the road? Not a one of them is up here laying eggs. Well, the way things are going, we aren't likely to have anyone buying eggs today, said Farmer Tucker. We need that peacock down there stopping cars. When the peacock heard that, he smiled the biggest smile you ever saw on a bird's beak. I am helping, he thought. He squirmed back and forth until he popped out of the cramped hen house. Then he trotted off to find the hens. The exhausted hens were all clucked out. Every feather was out of place. <sighs> what a day. We couldn't stop one car. It's true why most of them didn't even slow down. The peacock met the hens as they trudged up the road. I can tell you, I'm no good at laying eggs, he said. I'm just not meant for it. One hen nodded. I put on my stellar strut and I eat. Even I couldn't stop a single car, she said. I have to hand it to you, Fancy Feathers. Your job is harder than it looks. The other hens agreed. The peacock looked relieved. So the hens marched back to the hen house. The peacock strutted down the road. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. And things were quiet again on the Tucker's farm. All right, friends, thanks for listening. Bye. Oh my goodness, wasn't that wonderful? I love listening to our teachers read and I especially love learning about their favorite stories. It was so much fun. I did wanna take a moment and share my favorite story with you. And if you spent time with me in kindergarten, you probably remember it. My favorite book is called Square Cat. It's a really sweet story about some cats who learn the value of friendship and kindness. That gives me an idea. Why don't you ask a safe adult or a parent to leave a comment below and tell me what your favorite story is? And I think we'll put all of your names into a hat and draw someone out to win a reading prize pack. Oh, I just think that sounds like so much fun. I'm so glad we got to spend this time together. These were precious moments for me. I'll see you soon.